people all over this world. Yeah, people all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus. Hello, my friend. It's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of It's a Word Thing. Father, we are so grateful, as always, for another opportunity to study the Word of God. We understand that it is a light and lamp to our path and to our feet. And the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of a holy and a sovereign God. We thank you so very, very much that the Word of God is a cleansing agent. Jesus said, by my words, you have been washed by the words that I speak. There's power in the word of God. <clears throat> and so, God, we thank you so very, very much. We thank you so very, very much for this table that you've prepared for us. This is the bread of life. We thank you so very, very much for the bread of life that sustains us, that keeps us, Father, that keeps us. And so I lift up those who are viewing the telecast today and whatever needs they may have, God, I pray that you will provide in the name of Jesus. I Thank you, Lord. I speak to vision. I, I've prayed this prayer over eyes before, but that just came to me. And so I'm praying, I'm praying for eyesight, for vision right now. Issues in the eyes, issues in the eyes. I'm praying for issues in the eyes right now in the name of Jesus. I come against blurriness right now. That's not cataract. Something just happened to where your eyes are blurring right now. Uh, and so I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. That film that just came over your eyes, that cloudiness that just came over your eyes, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you so very, very much for the anointing that rests upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. We give you glory and praise for everything that's going to transpire in the teaching today. Magnify and glorify yourself like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, my friends. So we're back again and we're still dealing, uh, we're still dealing with the subject of the trusting in God. He said, if I'm going to be able to uh, experience the things that God is doing for me in 2020, I'm going to have to put my trust in him. I'm going to have to piss you off, put my trust in him. And so I want to go back and, and re repeat something to your hearing because it's important. The reason we're still dealing with the trust factor, friend, is because that's the issue. That's the area we have the issue in. We have an issue trust in God. And I don't, I don't understand really for God to have done as much as he has for us. I don't understand how the body of Christ could have such a trust issue with God, a lack of faith and belief in God. I just don't understand it, friend. I don't understand that at all. Now, those of you who are watching who are not believers, um, the Bible lets us know that we have to first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You can believe in God. You can believe in God. Just like you put your faith, your trust, your confidence in, in other things, you can do that. You can put that in God. But here's, here's, here's what I want to say to you. Give God a chance, friend. Give God a chance. One day at a time, one step at a time, give God a chance. You can't lose <clears throat> by giving God a chance, but you can win. Hallelujah. As you trust and obey the voice of God, money will show up for you. Trust him and he will provide for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we, I, I, I went over last broadcast the three things that God had, just to, just to rehearse it in your hearing, the three things that God said to me about 2020. <clears throat> he said, this is the year of clarity. This is the year that money is coming to the body of Christ. And this is the year that all things are now ready. Uh, we're going to get to, we're going to get to all things are now ready, God willing. Uh, I don't know how much more time we'll be on dealing with the trust. Only God knows. Only God knows. Hallelujah. And so we're dealing with it right now. So let's go to Psalm 71. Well, 
in Psalms, in Psalm 64, we ended last broadcast in Psalm 64, verse 10, where it said, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him. We have a reason, those of us who are the righteous of God, we have a reason to be glad because we, it's been revealed to us, watch this friend, we have a revelation of who the Lord Jesus Christ is and what he's done for us. We have a reason to be glad, friend. First of all, your reason to be glad is God said that this is the year of clarity. He said this, he's bringing money to the body of Christ this year to answer things that money answer. And he said, all things are now ready. If nothing else, friend, that's three reasons to be glad right there. That's three reasons to be excited right there. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him and all the upright in heart shall glory. Hallelujah. Excuse me, I rebuke this in the name of Jesus. Something is tickling my nose. Let's go to Psalm 71, friend. Psalm 71. The 71st Psalm. Let's go here. And in verse number one, hallelujah, in verse number one, listen to how it reads. <clears throat> in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. He, he, here again, here again, uh, I have to remember when I read scripture, I have to remember the time that this was written. They didn't have the, the revelation that we have now, so we see certain things written out, and we have to understand that they didn't have the revelation, the insight, and the discernment that we have now. So he says something here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to 1 Corinthians 14, 33 in just a minute, but let me read this again. In the, here's another, here's him putting, here's him making a conscious decision to put his trust, pistuo, place his trust and confidence in God. You see, friend, it's a conscious decision and you have to make up your mind. Say, I got to make up my mind. Come on, friend. Say, I got to make up my mind. You have to have a made up mind, friend. You have to have a made up mind when it comes to trusting in God <clears throat> that I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this because it's detrimental for me not to trust God, friend. All the devil is, look, is looking for is for you not to have trust and faith in God, for you not to be sure about who God is in your life, friend. That's what he's looking for. And that is giving place to the devil. But Paul says in Ephesians, I think it's 427, give no place to the devil, friend. For him to see that you don't have trust and confidence in God, you're giving place to him now. Hmm. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Conscious decision, conscious decision. I have to decide to do that. You are in the valley of decision. Every day, all day, you're going to find yourself in the valley of decision, friend. You have to decide. It's not going to just happen, friend. You got to decide to do that. The songs say, I have decided to follow Jesus. You see what I'm saying? You, that's a decision you have to make, friend. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, I have to confess it with my mouth and believe it in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and I'm saved. That, that salvation come that way. You see, friend, you have to make a decision. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust, pissed you, O. Let me never be put to confusion. <laughs> in, in, in 1 Corinthians, yeah, 14, 33. Let's go there right quick so I can tell you why, why I got to be mindful because, see, when I see certain things in the scriptures, yeah, yeah, 14, I'm sorry. When I see things in the scripture, I got to remember when things were written. Listen to what the Bible says. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. There's not supposed, in the true church, friend, there's not going to be any confusion. Confusion come when we're not being the, the true church, when we're wanting to do things that's contrary to the will and the ways of God. That's when confusion come. Confusion shows up, friend, when we don't want to obey God, when we are slack in obeying God, taking our time in obeying God. In verse 40, it said, let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. If all things are done decently and in order, friend, there will be no confusion in the church. Church. There will be no confusion. God is not going to lead me into confusion. <laughs> He's not the author of confusion. Hallelujah. He's not the author of confusion. Hallelujah. So he says, and, and let me never be put to confusion. God, 
We make decisions, friend. We make decisions. We, we can't do that to God. God is not making decisions for me. The way God will keep me from confusion is God, watch this, as you trust and obey the voice of God, that's how you stay. That's how you stay out of confusion. You you trust God. You do the things that God tells you to do. When God speak to your friend, you respond uh, 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 promptly and correctly to the voice of God. That's how you stay out of confusion, friend. Confusion comes when we act like we're going to take our time in obeying God, friend. If you obey God right away, friend, you want to worry about no confusion. If you make up your mind that you're going to obey God, you won't have no confusion. Confusion comes when I'm trying to figure out whether or not I'm going to obey God, friend. Put your trust. Make a conscious decision, friend, to put your trust in the Lord. And you won't have to worry about the confusion. Because this is the year of clarity. If this is the year of clarity, friend, God is going to assure that you see things clearly so you won't have to worry about being confused. But in order for you to experience this, friend, this means you're going to have to be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, doing the things you're supposed to do. There's a time and a place for everything under heaven, friend. So I'm not telling you 300, I'm sorry, 24 hours a day, you got to be reading your Bible and all that. God is not just talking to you when you read your Bible, friend. God is talking to you all day long. You just got to want to hear from God. You just got to want to hear from God, friend. God is not going to lead you in confusion. <clears throat> He's not going to lead you into confusion. He'll lead you. <laughs> You're going to be able to see things clearly, friend. Let's go to Psalm 91. Let's go to Psalms 91. God says this is the year that clarity is going to be. This is the year of clarity. He's telling you there will be no confusion. He's not going to lead you into confusion. This is the year of clarity. Psalms 91, starting at verse 1. Look at what it says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Watch this. I will say, verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, a place of security a place of safety, my God, in him will I trust. You see that, friend? In, listen, friend, th this is a conscious decision. You have to make the decision. You have to decide that's what you're going to do. But you have to decide you're going to do that before the time comes for you to put your trust in him. You have to do it before. God predestined, pre-planned, pre-purposed everything. So when things happen, times come, it's already done. It's already in place. So your trust will already be in place, friend, if you decide that whether hook or crook, like they say, you're going to trust in God regardless of what said, you are going to trust in God. Come on here, somebody. Come on here, somebody. Verse number Verse number three, surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowlers and from the noisome pestilence. Watch this. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. You see that, friend? And under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. You see that, friend? You have to decide that you're going to trust God. It's a decision that you have to meet. Let, let me read this to you again, friend. Let me read. I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm going to start at verse 1 and read this to you again. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is, not he will be, friend. He is my refuge and my fortress. He is, friend. And once you get to the point where you say he is, friend, now you have confidence in him. You have confidence. He is. This is what he is to me. He is my refuge and my fortress. He is. That makes it easier for you to, to put your trust in him, friend. Watch this now. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. He is my refuge and my fortress, and he is my God. Listen, friend. Listen. In him will I put my trust. This is why I'm putting my trust in him because this is who he is to me. Until he become that to you, friend, you're not going to put your trust in him. Verse number three, surely, you're going to have to be sure, assured of this, surely, listen, he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowlers and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. See, you got to declare he will cover me. He will cover me. 
and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You see that, friend? You got to declare that this is who God is in my life. And because he is this in my life, I can put my trust in him. Because I have found out as I live my life with God, this is who God is to me. Hallelujah. He is almighty. There's nobody stronger than him. There's nobody who knows what he know or more than him. No, no. He's omnipotent. He's omniscious and he's omnipresent. He's all knowing. He's all powerful and he's all present all at the same time, friend. Hallelujah. And once I know this about God, that I'm sure about this about God, Lord have mercy. I love the Lord and I won't take it back, friend. I love John chapter six. I want to take you there again because I love Peter's respond to the question. My goodness, I love this right here. In John chapter 6, again, starting at verse 66, I love this narrative, friend, because this is the declaration of the true church, friend. And once you get to this place, you shall not be moved, friend. You won't be moved. Listen to this. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Hallelujah. Then said Jesus, you got to understand, all of them wasn't here just like Judas was a named disciple, but Judas was the devil. So, you know, he, okay. Verse 67, then said Jesus unto the 12, the true church, the solid foundation of the church, will ye also go away? Here go Peter, here go Peter. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Where else are we going to go? Where else is there to go? Once you've reached the top, friend, where else is there to go? Once you've found out the truth, friend, where else is there to go? Then Jesus said unto them, will, will, will ye also go away? <clears throat> then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou have the words of eternal life. Look at what he's saying, friend. He said, you have the words of eternal life. Where else, are I'm, where else will we go to get what you have? We haven't had it before we came to you. So that means it, it was nowhere to be found until you showed up. Glory to God. Verse number 69 and we believe confident, we trust, we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You see that friend, he say, we're sure about this. We, we're not tossed to and fro about this. This is not our issue. This is not our issue. We may have an issue, but this is not it. Assurance is not my issue. Come on, friend. Come on, friend. Come on, friend. I'm praying that you have another issue, but, but your trust in God shouldn't be one of them. Your assurance about who he is and who you are in him, I hope that's not your issue. Because that's what Peter, Peter said, that's not our issue. Ah, we may have some, but that's not it. Okay. Okay. You, you have to decide, get to the place where you understand Listen, I, I may have some issues, but my, my, my trust in God, my believing that God is able, that he's powerful, uh -uh, I, I don't have that issue. Now, every now and then I, I may, my, my faith may get shook just a little bit, but I know how to come around. My, that Holy Ghost in me will bring me around just like it brought Jesus around in the Garden of Gethsemane. God, I know, Father, I know that this cup can pass, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. The Holy Ghost will bring you back around to your senses, friend. Hallelujah. I love this thing for real. Psalms 115. Come on, travel with me. Psalms 115. Psalms 115. Once I get to the place that I'm assured of who God is in my life, I know these things about God, but see, I have to spend time with God, friend. That's how I'm going to learn to trust God, just like you would learn to trust anything or anybody else. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's amazing how, how we put trust in a chair, something simple as a chair. Nobody inspects a chair before they sit in it. Nobody, friend, nobody inspects a chair just to see whether or not it's going to hold them. We just sit down in the chair. That's a learned behavior, friend. That's a learned behavior. So what God is saying, he needs for you to learn to trust him just like that. Oh, my goodness, that's good, friend. He said, I need for you to practice just like you just sat down in that chair. You can just cast your cares upon me just like you decide to do that. You don't inspect the chair. You just sat down in it. So why you want to critique God, friend, the, the one who gave us the, the, the 
the, the knowledge to, to make the chair. Seem like we put, we should trust him more than the chair maker, more than the chair itself, friend. Come on, don't do that. Don't do that, friend. Come on, walk with Bishop right now as we walk with the Holy Spirit right now. God is saying, just like you don't inspect the chair, don't be putting me under a microscope to see if I can be trusted. Trust me. Oh, man. You know what? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Again, I love you for this. Listen, the Lord said, you go out there and you, you crank your car until you have a reason, until you have a reason you trust that your car is going to start until it gives you a reason not to trust it's going to start to make you inspect it. You just get in the car, stick your key in or push the button and start the car. God said, that's what you need to do to, until he give you a reason, friend, not to be able to trust him, confide in him, to be assured of him. Trust him, friend, until you get, he give you a reason not to. I can promise you he'll never give you a reason not to, friend. Come on, walk with me now. He'll never give you a reason not to. It's amazing how we put so much faith and trust in man-made objects, friend. But the maker of all things, the one who holds the breath of life in his hand, friend, we want to critique him. We want to put him through all kinds of tests. It's not fair, friend. It's not fair. And God allowing you to trust in the things that you trust in to show you, to teach you that if you can trust in that, you can thank you, Holy Ghost, if you can trust in that, you can also put your trust in me. Jesus said, you trust, you believe on the Father, you can also believe in me. Uh, uh, uh. You know, the Lord is the one that's keeping you from falling when you sit in that chair. It's not the chair, the strength of the chair, friend. I know you think it's the quality of the chair. <laughs> and quality has its place. Don't get me wrong. Quality has its place, but I guarantee you screws, nuts and bolts and glue is not holding. Thank you, Holy Ghost, holding it together. Just like nails wasn't holding Jesus to the cross. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, come on, pray for me if you're going to do it, if you're going to pray. Okay, we're in Psalms 115. <laughs> I'm enjoying this thing right here. Hallelujah. Okay, we're in Psalms 115 and want to start at verse number nine. Listen, friend, Psalms 115, starting at verse 9. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You see this, friend? He's saying, trust in the Lord. Trust, O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. God is our helper, friend. He's our helper. He's not in our life, friend, to, to tear up stuff and to steal stuff, rob us of things. No, God is here to help us. Watch verse 10. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. He is their help. You see that, friend? He is their help. He keeps saying he, he's your help, friend. You can trust him because he's your help, my friend. Money is coming. God is, he's bringing help, friend. He's bringing help. He's bringing help. Money. Okay, verse number 11. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You see, friend? Those of us who trust in him, friend, those of us who reverence and fear God, we can trust in him because we're the only ones who are going to trust. Jesus said there are many things, <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to do, many things I want to do, but I can't do it because the people don't trust me. They don't have the faith. They don't believe in me. And friend, this is the only thing that's keeping you from experiencing what God is talking about, friend, is your lack of trust in God. He said, he told me to say this to you last broadcast. He said, tell them, if I could get them to listen to me long enough, I'll get them to believe. Lord, have mercy. He said, tell them, if I could get them to listen to me long enough, because faith coming by hearing, friend, and hearing by the word of God. He said, tell them, if I can get them to be constant and consistent and listening to me and not all these other voices that's in their life. He said, I'll make them believers. They will become believers. Friend, come on here, friend. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now, walk with me right quick. Walk with me. I'm almost finished with you. Walk with me right quick. Those of us, who, us, uh, of us who fear, reverence him. Let's go to Psalms 118, right, right next to those Psalms 118, uh, 118, 8 and 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better, friend, to trust in God than to put confidence. Is that not what the Holy Spirit has been having me to say to us? We put, anytime that you will sit down in a chair, my friend, anytime you'll just sit down in the chair and not inspect it, and not inspect it, guess what that says? You trust in the man who made the chair. 
Anytime you go out there in that car and you just crank it up, you don't, you don't think about it, just go, you putting your trust in the man that produced that car. Come on, friend, walk with me right now. God, listen to what the scripture says. This is what it says. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. But we are constantly, consistently putting our trust in man. Verse nine, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes or watch this now, because princes represents government. Princes represent government. And so here it is, we put our trust in a single man or a group of men called government. And this is why we're not making it, friend. This is why we're not making it. Remember Israel wanted a king. They didn't want the king of kings. They didn't want God to be king of kings in their life. They wanted a king. And God said, let me tell you what this man going to do. Let me tell you what government is going to do to you. Listen, friend, this is important. This is important. This is important, friend. It is better to trust or have confidence, piss you or place your trust in the Lord than to have confidence, to be confident in man who is very, very limited, friend. The only power we have is the power we've been given from God, friend. That's the only power we have, the power we've been given from God. Verse number nine again, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence, piss you or put confidence in government, princes, government, friend, because government is only limited. You know, government is made up of people. <laughs> government is made up of people, friend. So there you are. You have to place your trust in God, friend. Government is not going to do it. You know, there's a lot of things that our government have been doing, friend. A lot of things they've been offering us. And they offer us stuff, friend, and we go for it. And all that is to keep you from having trust in God, friend. That's to keep you from having trust in God, friend. Put your trust in God and not man. Put your trust in God and not man. It's better for you to put your trust in God, friend. Not government, not man. Put your trust in God. Government don't have the money. God has got the money for what you need. And God is bringing money to your friend this year. Remember, this is the year of clarity. This is the year that God is bringing money to the body of Christ. This is the year that all things are now ready. I have to pack up now and I have to go. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you've enjoyed what God has been saying to you today. Own it, friend. Grab hold to it. Don't let the enemy steal it from you. Know that I am praying for you. I am praying for you, friend. And I ask in the name of Jesus that you will think about KPLE in your prayers and in your giving. I will meet you back here, God willing. I'll meet you right back here next week, same time, same place. Bishop, love you to life. And I'll see you next time, my friend. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. People all over this world, yeah. People all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus.